As joining us uh, now, CFRA senior analyst Garrett Nelson with a hold rating for Tesla and CNBC reporter Laura Kolodny uh, as well. Very good afternoon to you both. Uh, I'll come to you first, uh, um, Garrett, in terms of uh, the, the bottom line and the top line. Is this uh, very impressive uh, and is it the key factor that you are looking out for anyway on, on this earnings release? Sure. Thanks for having me. It is very impressive. On the top line, the revenue came in about $110 million above consensus. But the real beat... Uh, the real factor that drove the 15 cent earnings beat on the bottom line was due to better than expected margins. Their automotive gross margin came in about 100, uh, about 100 basis points uh, better than a year ago. And so that's what really drove the beat. So, um, you know, it was a, it was a solid quarter. Um, you know, one thing about Tesla is they've really started to execute over the last year, year or two. Um, this was the sixth quarter in the last seventh in which their earnings have beat expectations. So I think, you know, that's the real difference with this story is, you know, they're finally executing. And, uh, you know, one thing that analysts are really looking for is the timing of the completion of their new factories, the one in Germany and the other in Texas, um, which they reiterated are still on track for completion and first deliveries by the end of this year. So uh, not much change with the guidance. Right, to, to you, what is the key question for the for the analyst call coming up? Well, it looks like the stock is very little changed here at post-release, which is a bit surprising given the, given the magnitude of the beat. Uh, one thing, just looking quickly through the release, is they weren't real specific on the full year uh, deliveries guidance. So, um, you know, but we think that's intentional. Uh, after their experience last year, in which their guidance was for uh, sales of a half million units, and with all of the issues that came up and all the headwinds they faced with COVID, and the shutdown of their main factory in Fremont, California, for almost two months, it put an enormous amount of pressure on Elon Musk and on the workers to really execute, to hit that guidance, which they just barely did. So, you know, we mm -hmm. think that's intentional. It gives them a little more flexibility. And we know there are still part shortages, particularly semiconductors, that, um, that are affecting Tesla and other automakers. Laura, I think we fixed your audio, and I was eager to hear what you were going to say, I mean, because you write about this all the time. What are the key questions facing Musk and Tesla at the moment? I always think about how Tesla can maintain its competitive edge with so many new battery electrics coming to market from Audi, VW, Ford, you name it, is some of these upstarts like Rivian. And the fact that they are growing sales more than 100 percent, you know, year over year for the same period, but only grew their mobile service fleet and their service centers by like 20 to uh, 22 to 28 percent, you know, it's a sign that they have a lot of cars out there, but the customers who remain frustrated with long wait times for service, that's that's a sort of an attack vector for competitors. And I always notice that in operational detail. Laura, should we expect any comments on, on the recent uh, crash in Texas or, or not? I wouldn't expect them to comment on an ongoing investigation during the earnings call, but they might speak to progress on and, you know, hurdles with developing the automated driving systems, which are not autonomous, but are level two automated driving systems. So advanced driver assist. Are they still getting making money, uh, Garrett, on, on these credits as the other automakers ramp up the competition? Shouldn't they need it less? They are, and it's a very important source of earnings, not only revenue, but earnings, because you think of it, there's basically no cost associated with that revenue, and they've been increasing, uh, that line item has been increasing significantly in recent quarters. So, um, so you, you know, it's, it it's always down. a question. That's right. That's okay. right. So, no, we think it actually increases over time. Interesting. Garrett Nelson, thank you for joining us. Laura Kolodny, to you as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.